Hey guys, in a recent video, I made this, which is my Raspberry Pi streamer. This uses a Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi camera module, and the Raspberry Pi Pi Maroni camera attachment, along with some pieces I put together myself and this really cool camera swivel. You can find the video to how I put that together here. But one of the other cool things that I decided to do with it was turn it into a time-lapse camera. I've been able to take some pretty cool time lapses around my apartment. But to really get the strength out of this thing, I need to be able to take it outside. So to do that, I'm going to be adding this battery pack and this USB cable to the setup so that I can go shoot outdoors. But before you can get that far, you need to be able to run it like this. That is to say, you've got to be able to set this up and use the Python script that you'll find in the About section below and have it be working. Okay guys, I thought I would just talk through the code quickly, just so you understood exactly what we were looking at. This is a Python code. Before using the script, make sure that you create the directory tilde timelapse, that's to say in your home directory, so it's forward slash home, forward slash pi, forward slash time lapse. You should also make the directory time lapse forward slash completed. This file, that is to say the Python file, timelapse.py, should live inside forward slash time lapse and is run with the command Python, then tilde time lapse forward slash time lapse.py. If you rename it or make any changes, you'll need to make those changes throughout. So just looking at the actual Python script itself, first thing we need to do is import time. From Pi Camera, import Pi Camera. From the OS, import system. Basically, let the system know that we're going to be using time, the camera, and the OS system itself. The next set are some commands that are specific for the Pi Camera. First, we're, the camera will be Pi Camera. Camera.resolution, we're going to set this as full HD, 1920 by 1080. So if you wanted to change that, you can change that there. My camera was flipped upside down, so I had to rotate that. So camera V flip true, camera H flip true. If your camera is upside down, you may remove these or want to change them to false. Okay, now this next section is where we declare the timer. Sleep time is the amount of time between pictures. If you increase this, then it will take longer time lapses. Frame count starts always starts at zero. Frame stop is the number of frames that you'll capture. Now later on we're going to see that I'm doing this at 24 frames. So at 24 frames per second, 240 frames means that I'm going to be making a 10 second time lapse. You can change this frame stop number and you will create more frames. Or you could increase the time to create a longer time lapse. The next thing I did was create this wait variable. And wait is just to tell us how long it's going to take. You'll see it in the next section here. I'll just skip ahead. Photography will now take approximately this many minutes. To figure that out, what I've done is I've taken the frame stop and multiplied it by the sleep time. That means it'll tell us the number of seconds that this script is going to take to run. Divide that by 60 will tell us the number of minutes that it's going to take, and that's what prints this out. Photography will take approximately X minutes. In this example, the answer is four minutes. The next line is, says print taking photos now. This is a loop that'll be created and it'll continue through this loop until all 240 pictures have been taken. You'll notice here that it says zfill4.jpg. That'll fill each frame with three zeros and then a number. So it'll be called image 001.jpg. You don't need to worry about that too much, but that's what will be created. This has a natural limit of 9,999 frames. If you want to create more than that, you need to change the Z fill number. It goes through the sleep, and we'll see the cycle continue. Each time it does it, it goes through frame count. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to create the film. And this is going to be done with AVConv. It'll go through each image using the video codec libx264, creating a time lapse with the name, the current date, and timelapse.mp4. After it's finished completing the mp4 file, it'll move it to that timelapse forward slash completed folder that we created in the very first step. Next, it'll clean up the old JPEGs and remove all of the JPEGs that were created shooting our timelapse. 
When it prints done, the only thing that should remain is that .mp4 in the completed folder. All of the JPEGs up to that point will be removed from the system. Cool. So that's our script. Why don't I go ahead and show you a couple examples of it. If this isn't working, then you can't move on to the next step, which sees us take it outside. Go to the About section, find the relevant scripts, get them up and running on your Pi, and ask any questions about that portion in the comment section below. Once you've got this part up and running, we'll move on to the next step. Thanks very much for tuning in today, guys. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like the video if you thought it was good, dislike it if you thought it was bad. If you found this video particularly useful, you can, of course, buy me a cup of coffee in the About section below. Really appreciate everybody who supports this channel. You can also do so on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who does that. It's always best when we create little communities, so if you've already created a time-lapse camera, please share your experiences below. If you're starting out on this project and need some help, don't forget to ask. Thanks again, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next video where we take this outside.